I spent a thousand dollars trying to revive the sales from my book, a book that had been kind of struggling to get any kind of traction whatsoever. And it kind of worked a little bit. Let's step back with a little bit of hypothetical here. You've done it. You've written your book, had it edited. You've got your beautiful cover and now you're ready to watch the sales just roll in. That's when it really sets in. Your sales flat. You're deeply in debt due to editing costs and the beautiful cover that you had just paid for. So now what? What are you going to do? Spend money, more money. That'll that'll fix it. Now, jokes aside, that's kind of what happened to me. That's kind of how I got out of this pit that I had put myself in with some really poor sales. You see, I made the mistake of trusting that people would just come across my book naturally or by writing a second book that that would somehow make it even easier to find my book. And no, those did not work. Thus getting to the point of this video, I spent a thousand dollars trying to market my book, but it wasn't spent evenly. And that's what I want to talk about. The first thing you have to realize as a new author is that when you are putting a book out there, there's not a whole lot of incentive for someone new to come to your book. They don't know who you are. Maybe your cover is pretty. Maybe you have a really great idea. Maybe your book itself is fantastic. Maybe even your book blurb is great and you may convert a couple people. But getting someone to take a chance on you, it's an uphill climb. You are competing against best selling authors. You are competing against authors that already have that reader's heart, mind and soul and you're trying to say, hey, look at me, come, come, come look at this book. But you're trying to do it in a way that has no real reviews on it, perhaps, or very few reviews. It's a difficult thing to try and get through, to get through to that person. Believe it or not, people love what they love and trying to convince them that they may love your work, too. It's not that easy. So this is when you have to face a harsh reality as an author. Now, when I spent $1,000, I did not just pump out $1,000 into Amazon ads trying to get like the book recognized because I remember that key thing. I am competing against other books, some that do cost more, but some that cost less. I am trying to get that first impression. And that's the mindset that I went into this with. I am just trying to get someone to look at my book. So I had to discount it a lot. I had to take my book drop it down from its regular price of $4.99 to $0.99. Cents. But that alone doesn't do it. That had to coincide with a marketing plan that would actually get my book into the eyes of readers who are not just interested in my book and genre, but also readers that are interested in getting a book, trying a new author for a cheap price. Enter the newsletters that I picked. Now for this $1,000 that I spent, we went with a couple different newsletters, general advertising, and the big one, BookBub. But this is where I kind of have to come clean. I did not spend my money evenly at all. In fact, of that $1,000, a massive chunk of it went to one place. Of that $1,000, 700 of it, 70% of it, went directly to BookBub. BookBub, if you're not aware, is the absolute largest newsletter for discounted books. It has potential to be the largest conversion rate for any of these discounted newsletters for an author to buy. It is also very difficult to have your book approved by BookBub with a 10 to 20% chance for authors. And that 10 to 20% chance is including you among other offers like Brandon Sanderson. So consider it even lower for a new author to get approved. In fact, since getting this BookBub ad, I have tried a couple times and I have not been approved for recent ads with BookBub. But what do you get for the opportunity to spend that much money? And how did it compare to much cheaper options or completely non-related options like advertising with Amazon and BookBub, which I know that's a little confusing, BookBub and BookBub, but BookBub has a featured deal, which you have to be approved for, and they have advertisements, which you can just pay for. 
But let's get into exactly what happened with the breakdown of the numbers. And for the record, I am not subtracting the money made because it gets a little bit confusing with how Amazon punishes you for lowering your price below $2.99, taking your 70% royalties and making it 35%. Well, you only get 35 cents per sale from Amazon, but there is no such punishment when you do it with draft to digital although they are taking an extra 10% cut. So that sale is about 59 cents per sale. It just, it got really confusing and the numbers are weird. So just, that's all a wash. We're just trying to say the number of total sales really divided by the cost. Simple math, for BookBub, that worked out to be about $2.40 per sale. So in order to sell a book, I paid $2.40. Now for the other newsletters, newsletters that cost between about $10 to $50. There are some more expensive ones like Robin Reads, which I believe is around $100 or more at this point. Fussy Librarian, Book Librarian, those kind of things. Well, I spent about $200 on, on those sales. And these were all done kind of bef like a couple days before the BookBub ad and right after. We ended up with 119 sales from all the other ads. So essentially I paid $1.68 per sale. Well, that sounds like an amazing conversion rate, right? Like that's already better than BookBub. So if you think about it, think, oh, well, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't it be better than just to use the, all that money you put on BookBub and put it on these other newsletters? Because it, it the reach is not the same. It doesn't, it doesn't translate out the same way. I have been doing these newsletters for a very long time and you kind of run dry on some of these smaller newsletters where people just stop purchasing your book or even downloading it for free. The comparisons between some of these smaller ones that may have lists of 25,000 people, which sounds like a lot, compared to the million or two million on BookBub, depending on your genre, it's not really a comparison. So yes, while it sounds better to have the $1.68 per sale compared to the over $2 from BookBub, in reality, the BookBub itself may have influenced some of these sales too, because as some of these were coming after the sales, that may have convinced some people to buy the book as it was ranking a little bit higher. At the time of the rankings, I got up to number four in my, in my ranking. And that lends some credence to it and maybe adds psychologically a bit more of an impulse to just go ahead and pull the trigger on that 99 cent impulse buy, because that's what these are. These are impulse buys. Many of these people are never going to read your book. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. It's just an absolute impulse. And then we get to the advertisements, the Amazon ads and the BookBub ads. Well, these I spent about $100. $100 is not a big marketing budget. And I was kind of just testing the waters. I had not done much with this kind of traditional advertising before. Amazon was very simple. It was just using my book itself. Whereas BookBub, I had to kind of create this, this creative to make you buy the book. And it was this, this is what I use to convince people to buy my book. It's not the best, it's not the worst. I made it in Canva. I have changed it since then. I, I have made some updates which have improved my CTR rates. But how did I do? How did these advertisements do? Advertising to people, in the places where they want to get the book, where it's even easier to get an impulse buy. Well, $100 equals roughly 15 sales. 15 sales. Now the advertising started after the BookBub ads. So I had already been kind of riding high on that and the sales were starting to slowly die off. So I, I tried to pump it in, pump in a little bit of extra tail to the BookBub ads. So even some of these 15, may have nothing to do with the advertisements themselves and may have just been people that were opening up their BookBub email a little bit late. But if it's 15 sales, that results in $6.67 per sale. I would have been paying more to get someone to buy my book than my book actually costs not on sale. Not the best. I will caution here that this is probably not going to be the way it works for most people. There is a whole 
ecosystem of how to do advertisements on Amazon or BookBub. I've been trying to read a lot of David Gogren recently to try and understand it better, to try and figure out the right ways to target your audience members, the right, the right kind of creatives to use and words that will convince people to buy your books. But this was still kind of a rude awakening to see that I basically threw a bunch of money away in this point. So, so far of the of the thousand dollars, about 900 of it was worth it for me and 100 was com completely not worth it, except for a very painful lesson. But that's how I took a thousand dollars and turned it into sub 500 sales. If you have $1,000, I hope it will do a lot better than it did for me. Financially, this was not a good thing for me, but the idea that this many people had my book and are able to read my book, and the fact that I got some new reviews from that, it was worth it to me personally, just because I had been for so long just kind of flatlining, just kind of not doing anything with the book. Advertising your book can be difficult. Set your expectations accordingly and realize that it is tough. You are competing against a ton of other books and you are competing against other people's creativity and time. And not all of us have a lot of time. You're competing against Grogu and, and The Mandalorian. I mean, honestly, The Mandalorian season three is about to come up. Do you think I'm going to be reading a book during that? I'll probably read it at sometimes, but still, I'll be watching a lot of The Mandalorian season three. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video fun and a little bit informative on how things work in the marketing plans. If you have any suggestions for other people on how to market your book, please put it down in the in the comments below. I want to kind of pool our knowledge because I can show you the mistakes I made. I can show you the successes I have, but I am just one author and there's a lot of different things out there that I haven't even touched yet. Thank you so much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.